Again, everyone, and this will be the final video for now on the water here synth problem that's growing in Hotbeard. Hotbeard, but damn, if you go onto Google and you type that in, you'll see that there is a serious problem there. Um, there's the organization that's uh, busy dealing with the problem at the time, and some links that I want to show you. Um, it's a serious problem. You can see all this nonsense growing on the water. Um, this is by the boat club. Uh, you can see these free floating pests on water, um, some other pages which shows how it's being removed, um, it's just more and more footage about it and then I wanted to show you this video, just I wanted to show you this which will give you some explanation as to how this, how the people here has, has been trying to clear this problem, so let's have a look at this. Alright, so I wanted to show you this video, let's quickly have a look at it, um, basically it explains um, what, what's what been going on at the dam and this is when I found out just now after I made the first video and uploaded it, that there is an organization that's busy dealing with it, so let, let's just show you the intro of the video. The water hyacinth that's currently covering more than 30% of the surface of the Hot Westbrook Dam is the most invasive and rapidly proliferating aquatic weed in the world. For the last 10 years, the Department of Water and Sanitation ran a program, Metsamir, to keep the hyacinth and algae at bay on the dam. However, amidst allegations of corruption, nepotism and infighting, the department abruptly pulled the plug on this otherwise successful program. It's quite typical to expect in South Africa. So here's a gentleman called Graham Pepler. He's going to explain to you what's going on from their side. Many people have communicated with us to say that they've got the solutions, but when we offer them the opportunity to come and harvest here at the Uber Club, they just don't pitch. So what we're doing at the moment is we've got nets from Casper Krier, has got some nets from the Arabesper Fisheries. We're going to net the hyacinth and maintain it at the, at the shoreline so that the people who are coming to harvest it can then easily get it out of the water. So you can hear there's a little bit of frustration on his side, and I, and I can understand, um, you, you know, people always want to pitch in, um, and when push comes to shove, um, everyone's busy with their own stuff, so um, he's one of the individuals who's tasked with cleani cleaning up the dam. So I'm going to show you um, just one more part here. It seems like <laughs> the Department of Water and Sanitation hasn't learned from their past mistakes. But uh, so so this guy is a professor and he's basically just explaining that you cannot poison these plants with herbicide or pesticide or whatever um, these things fall to the bottom of the lake or the dam and creates a, just another bigger problem. So, I'm going to show you something else just now. Let's move it on. But also, no alien vegetation. And this is a pest that in South Africa is on a one way or another. But it's been a year and here on the ground is flourishing. So, he's explaining that this is an invasive plant. Um, it's it's it came from somewhere else and, and, and it is a massive problem um, it's destroying the ecosystem. The other thing that I wanted to show you is an article here China Daily um, you can find this link so if you read this article it says here that there is no other way to remove this other than manual labor um, and they explain here uh, field crews constantly working to keep the plant numbers at their lowest possible levels in exchange for the rivers and lakes to remain usable. So this will require physical input um, until someone has found a way of killing these plants in a way that doesn't damage the ecosystem further. Their other solution is um, they, they're growing earthworms and then feeding the yasin to the earthworms or to, gr to put shell turtles in the environment so that the shell turtles can eat the plant and, and, and that's about it. Let me show you the group that's dealing with this problem. Alright, so um, like I said, I found this organization that's already busy cleaning up the dam. So I just want to introduce you to them, um, or them to you rather. Um, you, if you see here, uh, type in Hot Pierce Put Dam Rehabilitation Steering Committee, you'll find all their inputs um, into cleaning the dam, and, uh, how it's been going so far. Um, you, you, you'll find 
that they're very responsive. I've sent them a message um, and they replied almost immediately. And they're open for any help. Um, they've went on to explain a few things as to the amount of money that's required and um, you know how the plant works. And, and, and like I showed you on, on, on this article, yeah, there's no other way to remove this than physical labor. So the people of the community, you gotta, you, you're going to have to make a choice whether um, you all want to work together and have this thing be kept under control. Or if you leave it, um, like it says here and, and many other articles, this thing will kill the ecosystem. It will kill everything. So the houses and stuff you guys have there will be, will be useless if this problem is left uncontrolled. So it, it's, it's kind of a cash 22 situation forcing people to work together. So I've been speaking with a gentleman from the organization. Um, he'll be giving me some information in terms of what's required in terms of, of money. Um, and, and other aspects of how to how to keep the dam clean, and and this is going to need to this is going to require a communal a communal gathering. It's going to require a majority of the people. Um, if majority of the people decide now, you know, it's not our problem. You know, someone else will take care of it. Fifty or hundred people can't provide five million rand for or seven million rand that's required to clean this. That's 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 unfair. So we can't leave the problem to two people only or fifty people. Whereas this problem will, you know, something like 25,000 houses around the dam, everyone there is going to have a problem once this ecosystem is destroyed. No one's going to want to buy houses at the dam. And um, yeah, so I'll be doing a couple of videos more on it later on and just showing exactly what's going on and where everyone's going. And um, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day and um, yeah, be safe.